Rogue One hit theaters recently, and honestly, it was a pretty good movie. I don't know if it's as good as some people are saying it, but it was definitely good. And it made me think back on why The Force Awakens was so disappointing. I mean, the movie was pretty good, the acting was pretty good, the CGI wasn't shit, and there's no Jar Jar Binks. I mean, what more could you ask for? Well, eh, kind of a lot. Let's start with one of the big ones. The Force Awakens was basically a soft reboot. I mean, it took place in the same universe, but they scrapped everything in the expanded universe storylines, and you could start with watching The Force Awakens and not having seen anything else and be totally fine. Now, sometimes a soft reboot could work. I mean, we kind of expected this after they got rid of everything in the expanded universe, but sometimes it does not work. For example, when you take a beloved movie such as A New Hope and you just redo it, and then you also claim that you're making this for the fans. Fans do not want a new, a new hope. They want a new hope, and then they want everything else after that. They don't they don't want A New Hope to repeat, especially when you tell them it's in the same storyline. When you go from watching A New Hope, and then you watch Empire Strikes Back, and you watch Return of the Jedi, and suddenly Empire's destroyed, and then you go to watch Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and the Empire is still there, and there's the Rebels, except for they're called the Resistance. You, no. <laughs> That's a mistake. I don't know why nobody told them that along the line. I mean, they had quite a bit of time to figure that out, but mistake. Going back on what I just said about how they claim to be targeting the fans, even George Lucas said that they threw out his manuscripts for episodes 7, 8, and 9 because they wanted to target the fans, which, as we've already established, they really did not do. They went for a broad audience. They wanted to bring in new people, which is kind of the idea behind a soft reboot, is to reinvigorate a dead franchise and bring in new people. The only problem is, Star Wars is not a dead franchise by any means. It was very thriving, and it had a very thriving community, and I know there are definitely some fans who are still ticked off by the fact the Expanded Universe no longer exists in the continuation of the Star Wars franchise. Now, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy Expanded Universe. It's definitely still out there, but it's kind of a raw spot for people. Even for me, it's still, you know, still a little bit frustrating. Another one of the big issues with this movie is the story really doesn't quite fit. If you watch Return of the Jedi and then you watch The Force Awakens, all you're going to be left wondering is, how the fuck did we end up right here? How did we get from the Empire's Destroyed, celebrating all over the place, to the Empire is now blowing up multiple planets at the same time, with a Death Star that's built into a planet, and the Rebellion is still happening, except for it turns out that there, there's no real reason for the Rebellion, because there's the Galactic Republic has returned, and it's very confusing. And if you read the books, it certainly makes it a lot easier. Uh, Aftermath books, not the greatest books, honestly, but they definitely help clear some things up as to what the hell is going on. But you still left wondering, why the hell did they start so late in this New Order, you know, storyline? Now, what they really should have done with this movie, and once again, I do not know how they got to this point, and no one was like, hey, wait, wait a minute, we're really going to do it this way? Why aren't we doing it the other way? What they should have done is they should have started it earlier in the storyline of this new empire. For example, had the movie began with the empire revealing themselves yet again from unknown space, Kylo Ren shows up and nobody knows who he is except for some people like that guy in Jakku and Han Solo and Princess Leia, if only they knew who he was, you know, suddenly it would make a whole lot more sense. You could watch Return of the Jedi and be like, ah, oh, they destroyed the Empire, and then you could watch The Force Awakens like, oh, everything's pretty great. Oh, no, there's a new Empire. Oh, God, that sucks for them. This is enthralling. I can just keep watching these movies, but they did it. I don't, I don't know how they made that mistake. I don't know who was the dummy who thought, Hey, A New Hope started in the middle of the Empire, you know, reigning. 
let's do it for this movie, except for just the movie previous to this one, the Empire was defeated and the Republic is back and everything's good and... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know how they, how they thought that made any sense. And that just proves my point as sometimes a soft reboot does not work. You know, for example, when you make terrible decisions as to what to do with that reboot. Like I said, good movie, but oh god, oh god, why did they make those decisions? And part of the issue with starting it with the Empire still existing just kind of there for who knows why, who knows why the Republic hasn't destroyed them knowing that they're there, one of the issues is, why the hell do we even care about the, this anymore? Why is this an issue? The Empire's out there. You know, if you're not going to make the conscious choice to destroy them when you have the chance, that's on you. That's not my problem anymore. You know what? You go do what you got to do. You know, that, I'm out at that point. I don't know why you made that mistake. And like I also said previously, if you read the books, you know, you kind of understand more as to what's going on. But not everybody's going to want to read the books, okay? You can't force people to read books to understand what the fuck is going on with your freaking movie. That's a terrible plan. That's a terrible idea. This is not the kind... This is, these are movies that are based around movies. Books should add to the movies. They should not be in in integral into making these movies part of the universe. That's a bad choice. It also leaves us with the problem is why the hell do we care about Kylo Ren? I know it sounds crazy, but you know what? I don't really understand what the issue is, you know? Sounds like he had a pretty good reason. Sounds like his parents were kind of deadbeat as far as I've gathered. And he went off to somebody who, you know, might help him. I mean, from what I know, Han Solo and Princess Leia were having trouble with their son, so they sent him to freaking Luke. I mean, how does that feel to be a kid? Your parents don't like you. They're going to give you to your uncle so that way he can teach you stuff. Wow. Yeah, there's no way you're going to go down the dark path on that, on that path, man. <laughs> no sorry, Bob. And you're probably thinking, with a new hope, I mean, they started that, you know, in the middle of the Empire. They started that in the middle of the action. You know, we don't really know who these characters are. We don't know why it matters. Except for you kind of do. I mean, right off the bat, they pretty much showed you that these guys are some bad dudes. And watching Kylo Ren destroy a computer does not tell me that these guys are some bad dudes. I mean, we did get to watch them murder civilians, but, you know, like I said, the Republic didn't destroy them to begin with. That's on them. Those civilians died because the Republic was stupid. And when you read the books, you're still going to think that those, those citizens died because the Republic was stupid, because the Republic was stupid. I mean, they went from making bad decisions before in the prequels to making bad decisions after the original trilogy. I mean, come on, figure it out. Some of these people were there when those bad decisions happened that led to the Empire, and they're still making the same bad decisions. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't know what Disney was thinking. Now, the next thing is they treated people like they were stupid. I don't just mean the fans. I mean everybody. I mean, are we in a society full of people that are that dumb that they can't put together that the reason why Han Solo and Princess Leia aren't together is because their kid went to the freaking dark side? You know, duh. Everybody figured that out. I mean, you don't need to have a scene where Han Solo talks to Princess Leia and he's like, he's like, I know that our son went to the dark side, and that's why I left you. And Princess Leia's like, I know, because I was fucking there, you idiot. I mean, why is that scene even there? And it's not just the only one. There are multiple scenes where they have to explain things like that. And it's like, you know what you could have done? You could have set the movie at the freaking time when this happened. And then you wouldn't have to write terrible dialogue. Now this last one is a bit petty, but it really speaks to the kind of detail that they were paying attention with in this movie, which is to say, not a lot of detail. Uh, now, Adam Driver, great actor, did a, did a great job with 
what he was given. I mean, for a kid who has, you know, parental issues, who is trying to live up to his grandfather and is talking to the skull of his grandfather, which is kind of weird, you know, for a kid like that, played it very well, expressed the kind of, you know, the kind of emotional trauma you'd expect he'd be dealing with. The problem is not that he was a great actor. The problem is that he did not look anything like Han Solo or Leia Organa. I mean, maybe it's just me, but when he took off that mask, because I, I, I didn't look up who was playing anybody, so I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, he said I was going to take off the mask. So I was like, oh, I get to see what the kid of Han Solo and Princess Leia would look like, you know, in this movie as opposed to in the comic books. Because, you know, I mean, they, got, they already got that. So, you, 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 know the, you know what people can, you know, draw up. But, you know, who's going to be playing him? Who, what's he going to look like? Oh, he looks nothing like them. He looks like a super British guy with ears way up here. No offense, but I mean... And, he, you know, he has a big nose, like my girlfriend points out. He had a big nose, and Han Solo has a big nose. But, you know, just having a big nose doesn't mean anything, especially when the noses don't look anything like each other. I mean, who... Who the hell thought... thought I, like I said, he did a great job, but... God, I cannot get past the fact that he doesn't... I, did Han... Did they adopt a kid? I know in the books, Leia was pregnant. Did she lose the baby? And they're like, oh, we got to adopt a kid now because we lost the kid. And so they picked this guy. I mean, he, remi he reminds me of what I would expect Oliver, no, Oliver from the Wheel of Time series to look like. Have you ever read those books? That's what Oliver looks like as an adult, is that guy. And Oliver is definitely not the son of Han Solo, I tell you that. Well, and maybe he could be, actually. But, my point is... God, he does not look anything like him. I mean, holy crap. I mean, phew. After I watched that movie, that was literally the only thing I could talk about was the fact that he did not look like Han Solo. And I, I'm still not, I still can't not talk about it. It's, it drives me crazy. It's just, it, I mean, I just can't, I just can't get over it. I can't get over it. Can you get over it? I want to hear about it in the comments if that bothered you or not. And if there are other things that I didn't talk about, because I know that there are some things that I missed on this video. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe as well. Ta let's talk about it in the comments. We can go more. If you agree with me, I want to hear about it. And if you don't agree with me, I also definitely want to hear about that because I want to know what your opinions are. Were you a big fan of Star Wars before The Force Awakens? If not, you know, tell me what you think about it be being somebody who was brought in by this. I want to hear all of your thoughts because this is not something that one man can just tell you how it is. This is definitely an opinion-based topic, but these topics, these things I've just covered are, you know, they are, they are still big glaring issues whether you have that opinion or not. Because, I don't know, I'm rambling. But don't forget to subscribe. I will see you later in the next episode I'm doing is going to be on Rogue One, and I'm going to be talking about what I think Rogue One did right. Because Rogue One definitely, you know, they, they didn't have a lot of these issues. There were definitely some problems. And I'll talk about this as well, but I'm not going to talk about it right now because that is coming up later. I'm probably going to have that on next Thursday, and I'm going to try and do as many of these on each Thursday as possible. You know, this is not something that's going to be consistent, so don't always expect this on Thursday. I mean, well, I mean, if, if it's going to come out, expect it on a Thursday, but don't, you know, you know, uh, don't, don't always expect it on Thursday. I'm also working on the next video. The recent one that just came out is uh, a story of Revan. So don't forget to check that out. Honestly, not very good, but you know, check it out. Trust me. You might like it. I don't know. I, at this point, I've worked on it so much that I really don't have good judgment on whether or not it's good or not. So I will see you guys later. Goodbye.